Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is the second in my series where I discuss our move from South Africa to the Netherlands. In my previous video I discussed our why, meaning our reasons why we decided to make the move. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it right here. I also just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single kind and positive comment that was left. I was genuinely and sincerely so overwhelmed, so hartelijk bedankt for that. Today's video is going to be focusing on the practical component, so how to move from South Africa to the Netherlands. Again, this is the video that I wish I could have had a year ago when we started the process. So hopefully someone out there who's considering to move to the Netherlands will find this and get a little bit of use out of it. I've divided the process into six steps. Get a job, get a visa, find accommodation, pack your bags and say goodbye, the admin that's waiting for you on the other side and create new rituals. Okay, so step one, the first step you have to take is get a job. I want to preface this step by saying that my husband and I are both qualified professionals and since I have a Dutch passport there was a lot of pressure on him to get a job in order to get a work visa so that he could come over. Um, so technically this first step is really my husband's area of expertise but in general I can say that in essence you're going to need to motivate to a Dutch company why they should hire you and pay for your relocation and your visa as opposed to hiring someone else. I can also say that from the moment that he started applying for jobs up until the moment that he signed his contract was about six to eight weeks. I also want to add that our goal was only to end up in the Netherlands in general. We didn't have any particular city that our hearts were set on and since my husband had the stress of finding a job, I told him no matter where he gets a position, I'm happy to move to wherever that is. So um, we were very open-minded and I think that also aided in making the process relatively quick. My husband ended up being offered four or five positions, all of them in different cities in the Netherlands. So we were fortunate enough to be able to do research on the various cities and choose the one that suited our lifestyle the best. Step number two is the visa. If you qualify as a highly skilled individual, you will need to apply for a skilled worker visa as well as a permanent residence card. If you are serious about relocating to the Netherlands, I do really suggest, of course, that you do your own research and don't just trust a random person on the internet's opinion on it. From our experience, it seems that your employer will handle the bulk of that. Uh, my understanding is that the IND or or the immigration and naturalization services of the Netherlands require that the employer make the application on your behalf to get the skilled worker visa. So you have quite a passive role in that um, and your company leads you through doing all of that subsequent to you signing your contract. Step number three is the step that no one warned us about. By the time that we had secured the position and finalized the paperwork, we thought we were done with the hard bit. We were so wrong. <laughs> As of 2024, the Netherlands is about 400,000 houses short, meaning that there is, I'd say, borderline a housing crisis. I remember around the beginning of our search, um, we made contact with an estate agent here in the Netherlands, and they told us that the market at the moment was tense. And I didn't really understand what they meant at the time, but I very quickly came to learn what he was trying to say. Before I tell you that, I'm getting ahead of myself, let me take you back a little bit. We had never been to the city that we ended up choosing, meaning I had no idea which areas were good, which were safe, which was more for students. I was able to contact a friend who already lived in the area and ask her advice as to accommodation options. She was extremely helpful and she also gave me a list of websites to use, which were the ones I used to ultimately get our apartment, which I am sitting in now. And those websites were Funda, Perarius, Meinhuizaken, Hierwoningen and Kamernet. I am not joking when I say that any mildly decent property is snatched within a week of it being listed on any of these websites. And then also above that, you also need to outperform your competitors because there are 50 other people looking at the property at any given moment. And I think that is what the estate agent meant when they said that it was a tense market. Like you could really feel the aggression in the air. I'm thinking that my legal history definitely aided us because I convinced agents to take us seriously and I was very quick on my correspondence with them and I was very proactive and I think that's a really important step that made a huge difference in terms of us being able to find our accommodation relatively quickly. My best advice for anyone in that situation is to pick up your phone 
and make a couple of calls to the agents. The one agent told me that the minute a property is listed, they get so many emails that they genuinely miss people's inquiries. I would highly recommend making phone calls. That's where all of my meaningful correspondence happened and that's how we ended up in this property. Um, I ended up being able to organize six viewings and we flew to the Netherlands to do them over two days. We found this property, loved it, and basically half an hour after we left the viewing, I phoned the agent to let them know, yes, this is it. The agent advised us that we shouldn't take longer than maybe an hour or two to decide because there were so many other people already interested in it. So be decisive, know what you want, and don't be shy to commit to a place. We just successfully house hunted in and now we're in Amsterdam for one night to catch our flight back to Cape Town tomorrow morning at 10. Very excited about the house, or the apartment I should say. We're going to go paint the town red now. <laughs> I know a lot of others aren't as lucky as we were. A couple of my husband's colleagues who also recently relocated to the Netherlands are in hostels or in hotels or staying at friends because the market is so tense right now. So definitely try to be proactive and make phone calls and do everything you can. I would say that I was a little bit obsessed. For three weeks, every hour, I would check the website, see what new was listed. That was by far the most stressful part of our move to the Netherlands. Step four is pack your life into two suitcases. And there isn't really much to say here on this topic other than it was a really nice excuse to sell two thirds of my closet because it is nice to have extra cash on hand for the first couple of months. over here um, I've got my jeans and my tops in here but now I need to decide which jackets I'm going to pack it's still I think about 15 days until we leave also learn from our mistakes Jacques and I we <laughs> we arrived at Schiphol airport with all seven of our suitcases from South Africa and didn't think to use a shuttle or a taxi and instead went on the public train all the way down to Brabant and let me just tell you it was very stressful managing seven suitcases with our entire lives and all of our valuables in them across a train compartment so please please learn from our lesson step six is concerned with admin waiting for you on the other side there are three things that you should do as soon as possible when you get to the Netherlands. The first is to make your appointment with your local municipality. At this appointment, they're going to give you your BSN number. You are going to need this number for virtually everything else. So try to get that as soon as possible. Right after you walk out of the municipality, just walk on over to your closest bank and open your bank account because the Netherlands uses the IBAN system, which is the international bank account number system, which we do not use in South Africa, which effectively meant that our cards were useless for a lot of things in the Netherlands for the first two to three weeks, which was really not an ideal situation to be in. So just try to get those two out of the way as quick as possible. Also, don't forget to get medical aid as soon as possible. Medical aid in essence starts running from the moment you touch down in the Netherlands. So if you only register or sign up for medical aid three months after you arrived, you're going to back pay those three months that you weren't medically insured, which can be like a pretty big financial burden for one month to just drop, I don't know, a thousand euros on medical aid. Also, just take note that within the first three months, you're going to need to do a tuberculosis or a TB test. Step number seven is create new rituals. I got really good advice shortly before we left South Africa, where someone told me the best thing to do when you get into a new country is to try and recreate things that brought you happiness in your old country. So for me, that was finding a walking route as well as finding my local rock climbing gym because I love rock climbing. I would also say be a little bit fearless. Don't be shy. Try to learn Dutch as quick as possible. People are so friendly here. And um, Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Everything is going to feel a little new in the beginning, but that's part of the excitement. And just try to view everything that happens with positivity and gratitude. In closing remarks, I also just quickly want to answer a couple of questions that were left on my previous video. The first one being, are any of my friends jealous? The long of the short of it is no. A lot of my friends, um, most of whom are in professional occupations, are actually planning on moving abroad within the next 12 to 24 months. And those who aren't planning to do so were genuinely so happy. Different strokes for different folks. You can have happiness in many formats. 
The second question I got was why do so many people and why did we move to the most expensive city being Amsterdam and we are not in Amsterdam like I mentioned earlier we are in the south in the Brabant region and um, I think probably people gravitate towards Amsterdam because it's maybe got the most job opportunities or it's the most well known and for people moving here who don't know much else about a country going somewhere that sounds familiar might be appealing um, it could be the same argument as to why people live in Cape Town in South Africa I mean there are certain things that draw people to to specific cities even if Cape Town is the most expensive it's still where so many people want to live so I suppose it just depends but for us though we're really happy to be down south um, another question I got was have we had any culture shocks and yes we have but the funniest one that I think is worth mentioning is <laughs> on our first day here our estate agent took us through the apartment explained to us that we would need to register with a service provider for gas and electricity and that right now the property wasn't registered for anything and in South Africa if you aren't paying for electricity which is top up as you go so you buy and then you are able to use it if no one is paying for it at the moment you're gonna be out of power so I immediately started panicking and I asked the agent but what is going to happen are they going to shut off our electricity <laughs> And she genuinely looked at me like I was a little bit crazy and just said, no, that won't happen. And that was a pretty big culture shock for me, but in a good way. It was so nice that they didn't shut the power off on us. And we are, of course, now subscribed to Gas and Electricity. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you've made it this far, you might as well click the subscribe button down below and like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.